Even though the academic community has long known that the people of prehistory not only managed to populate every coastal and major inland waterway over the entire world sphere more than 10,000 years ago, but even more especially, had also managed to populate many of the world's most isolated ocean islands as well. Still, it is yet to discover just how these achievements could have been accomplished, and by so many people, and perhaps most importantly of all, on a worldwide global scale. But you see, mystery exists merely from a lack of understanding. So in quest of the answer to this elusive riddle, and in consideration of the undeniable global seafaring evidence, it only stood to reason that the true significance of the solstice alignment at Stonehenge, itself an island monument, required a more thorough understanding of both the means and the methods which would have allowed all the major waterways of the world to become populated by a seafaring people whom are known to have both founded and developed the art of celestial navigation. To accomplish this task, it was necessary to delve into the foremost authoritative work solely dedicated to the art of celestial navigation and global map-making processes, a compilation of navigational principles so comprehensive and so highly regarded that the publishing rights to the original 1802 manuscript were purchased by the United States Navy in 1867. And even now, in this so-called modern age of electronics, this very same manuscript can still be found on board every active Navy vessel to ensure that on that fateful day, when their electronically based guidance systems are finally and catastrophically interrupted by an act of war, that an imperiled ship at sea will still be able to maintain its celestial navigational capabilities. It is within the pages of this coveted work where the historically correct means and methods of celestial navigation practices, as they are presented here, can be found as testimony to the truth of these findings. The mechanics and tables upon which the art of celestial navigation depend are in their entirety of a reasonably complex nature. However, the purpose of this particular presentation is only to explain the true reason for the solstice alignment at Stonehenge. And it is to that end that the following presentation is meant to be intentionally concise while moving precisely to that one particular point. However, it is not to say that the many thousands of enriched stories and related archaeological and navigational facts associated with these findings as they are presented here, are thereby diminished in any way whatsoever. But instead, these soon-to-be-revealed findings stand alongside others as yet another awe-inspiring testimony to the ingenious enterprises and the extreme academic adventurism of our seafaring ancestors, to whom every single person on earth, as you are about to see, is in some way related. Make no mistake, these were the men and women and their families who with their incredible foresight and determination of purpose memorialized their inspirational works in part by aligning certain stones at the monument known today as Stonehenge with the solstice position of the sun to mark with indelible, undeniable and incredible awe-inspiring precision the exact moment of the year when the sun and thus time itself literally stands completely still. And they did it all for a very specific navigational and humanitarian reason. This would be their legacy. It is a rarely known fact that the people of prehistory were the first to use spheres to define the physical world in which they lived. To that end it was necessary to establish a global network of precisely defined geodetic points to which all other points of geodetic interest could be subsequently tied. Thus, the manner in which this network of points was established, and how they were connected from one to the other, is as simple in its design as it was ingenious in its plan. Geometry is the world's oldest science. It is an ancient term which literally means to measure the earth. Geometry is both a mathematical science and a graphical tool. Developed by the people of prehistory more than 8,000 years ago, this mix of circular, 
spherical, and linear relationships uses the principal parts of a circle to locate points in both the sky and upon the surface of the earth, and with a most amazing precision. This geometrical configuration is an anciently derived navigational tool. It is known to both map makers and navigators alike as a circle of equal altitude. By simply maintaining the same angular position from a common center star or a common center point, the destination of a ship at sea or a journeyman on land would always lie upon the circle and it would always lie directly straight ahead. However, because a perfect circular course cannot be maintained when traveling over vast expanses of the Earth's surface, a second and a third circle of equal altitude are created, which in this particular case utilize the navigator's same most desirable 45 degree angle as measured upward from the horizon thus producing, by their perfectly configured intersections, a matrix consisting of three precisely defined geodetic points from which all other points of interest can be subsequently tied. Since the increasing or decreasing angles, as measured from any other point on the Earth's surface to each respective star, will then, by association, fix the observer's position relative to these three all-important predetermined geodetic positions. Only in this way, by first establishing a baseline reference, can the process of plotting vast portions of the Earth's surface, either on a map or on a sphere, begin. There is no other way. Therefore, because these critically important fixed geodetic points are of such global importance, it became prudently necessary to structurally memorialize each location for the purpose of centralizing their ongoing celestial observation activities. Since it was imperative for the sky watchers to continue seeking out from among the more than 2,000 stars which can be seen at any given time of the night, every group of three stars which conform to this same 45 degree equal altitude criteria. Since the night sky was ever changing as the earth rotated on its axis and orbited about the sun. To accomplish this task, various sighting methods were devised. Where some locations utilized sighting stones, others relied on incrementally marked wooden posts set out in rings, within whose center groups of sky watches, positioned back to back, would sight past a given stone or a selected wooden post of a known height, such that they would instantly know the angular altitude of any transiting overhead celestial object each one calling out their findings while the scribes and timekeepers precisely recorded these sightings in their astronomical almanacs. And they performed this work continually, documenting every moment of every night of every season of the year as they sat back to back under an ever-changing, sparkling night sky. thereby providing their adventuring navigators with the mobile ability to accurately plot their positions and to subsequently determine their course at any time of the night and on any night of the year. The celestial shape common to every group of three companion stars became well known to both navigators and map makers alike as a spherical triangle. Since this is as it would appear in real world terms when projected onto the celestial sphere, and as this same triangle would also appear, along with the precisely defined geodetic points of this particular configuration, when plotted on a pristine terrestrial sphere. Since it is only on a sphere that all points of geodetic interest are portrayed with a true global and spatial perspective. This ancient array of wooden sighting posts is known as Woodhenge. It is situated within an area where multiple earthen mounds were built so the critically important horizon could be plainly seen. Bit by bit, 
As each important celestial discovery was made in this part of the world, it was memorialized in stone. Stonehenge still serves as a lasting testament to the majestic achievements of this long-lost worldwide humanitarian community. And it is all situated on an island, which is completely surrounded by the open sea. This ancient array of wooden sighting posts is known as Woodhenge. It is situated within an area where multiple earthen mounds were built so the critically important horizon could be plainly seen. Bit by bit, as each important celestial discovery was made in this part of the world, it was memorialized in grand fashion out of Earth. This massive mound still serves as a lasting testament to the majestic achievements of this profoundly gifted worldwide humanitarian community. Woodhenge is the site of the first true city to be built in this part of the world, and it is situated along the shores of one of the world's greatest rivers, which in turn leads directly to the open sea. The ruins of the prehistoric district of Tuanaku are located near the world's highest and largest lake. The watercraft that are found here are created from hollow reeds in the exact same way as the vessels which once plied the ancient waters of Easter Island, the Indus River Valley, and Dangawat, exactly one half of the world away. Similar to Stonehenge, the massive stone portal erected here at Tawanaku was oriented to the solstice phenomena of the celestial seer. It is for this reason that Tawanaku is called the Rectangular Stonehenge. The ancient artifacts which were found here at Tawanaku are an exact match to those which were also found in abundance at Woodhenge. An ancient variant name for Tawanaku was Taikapala the stones that stand in reference to the center. Tawanaku is situated near the world's largest ocean and at the headwaters of one of the world's greatest rivers, which in turn leads directly to the open sea. Each one of these three widely separated geodetic points lie in perfect geometrical harmony from the celestial center of one of the world's greatest and foremost equal altitude circles, ingeniously and strategically configured, whose diameter is equal to exactly one quarter of the world's circumference, to collectively produce the most desired of all geometrical patterns, to ensure that all subsequent measurements of the Earth's surface would be most easily obtained, most efficiently charted, and most easily shared thus allowing all discovered sea routes, associated maps, charts, and spheres made of both the earth and the sky would forever remain in complete harmony with one another. And most incredibly, on a worldwide scale. But absolutely none of this would have been possible without a universal means by which each vastly separated location could have synchronized the timing of their critically important observations. And so they chose the very moment when time itself literally stands completely still. The day of the solstice. And perhaps they are just a set of single lines. But in truth, they are merely the beginning of what will one day be the greatest story that will ever be told.